Welcome back to my series on being an applied statistician using Jamovi. And in this video, we're going to deal with descriptive statistics in Jamovi. So let's start as we always start, and we're going to take a look at um, our statistical test decision tree. And let's just go back to uh, the principles of using this tool. What type of study do you have? Well, we're dealing with descriptive statistics, so we're going to deal with description. And then what one needs to look at is what type of data do you have? Interval data, ordinal data, or nominal data. And you can see that for each of these, there is the appropriate test statistic or just statistics. So interval, we have a mean and standard deviation. Ordinal, we have a median and a semi-interquartile range. And nominal, we have mode and frequency. And with that, we are going to go over to Jermovi. OK, so as you can see, I have opened up here uh, Jermovi, and I'm on the start page. I've already opened up a, a data set, and this data set has three variables in it. Um, these three variables um, I have chosen because I want to uh, show you how to do descriptive statistics in Jamovi. I have a nominal variable, I have an ordinal variable, and I have an interval continuous variable. So let's just look first at what these variables actually are. So I have a variable called first language. I'm just going to quickly click on that. And this brings up some data on the variable if you click on the heading here. So this is first language. This is the description is the language spoken by a student at home. This is a nominal variable. And if we look over here, we can see what the levels of this are. Number one designates English, two Spanish, three Korean, and four Arabic. The second variable I have here is called anxiety level. Let me open that up. And that's the student anxiety level. One equals high anxiety, five equals low anxiety. And this is a continuous interval um, variable. And the third variable I have here is test score. And this I'm going to look at as an ordinal score. This is test score in percentages of student grade on the test, and I have a range of percentages of student. I'm going to relate to this as ordinal data in the sense that I'm interested in who was the first student, the best student, the second best student, the third best student, and so on. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to go over um, the, the, the way we do descriptive statistics in uh, Jamovi, and of course, these statistics change according to the data type. So let's open up analyses over here. Let's go to exploration. Let's click on descriptives. Okay, so the first variable we're going to deal with is actually the interval var variable, the continuous. This is anxiety level. So let me just move this over into the variables slide. Now I'm going to click down here on statistics. So what statistics do I want for an interval variable? Well, first off, for all of these, we want to know sample size and missing. We want to know how much missing data we have in the variable. This is not about describing this variable so much as just you know what it looks like in the data set. We do want a mean. We don't want a median. It's not useful for us at the moment. We do want a standard deviation. We do want a minimum and maximum. We just This is just to check that uh, the scale we're using actually works. Sometimes when we download from SPSS, for example, you have a scale from 1 to 5, but it appears as 10 to 15. Uh, so we just want a, a quick check on the variable itself. We also want to know the normality of this variable. This is an important consideration. And then we do want to graph it out a bit. So we hit plots. And then what type of graph do we want? Well, we want a histogram and we want a density plot. So those are all the things we need. So basically, the statistics we use 
for interval data are mean and standard deviation. It's good to know the minimum and maximum. We want to know the normality of the variable or the non-normality of the variable that has important predictive criteria to it. Um, we want a histogram and we want the density, and I'll talk about that in a second. If we move over into this window over here on the right, this is where we have the results, and you can already see what the results are. So we have 20 people in this data set, and there's no missing data, that's good for us. The mean is 2.5, and the standard uh, deviation is 1.24. So 2.5 is the level of anxiety that we have. 2.5 on the five-point scale um, means it's closer to one, which is the high level, so a relatively high level of stress, I would say. Minimum and maximum, we have a five-point scale. The minimum is one, the maximum is five, so that's the scale is what it should be. And finally, we want to look at the Shapiro-Wilk normality test. Usually for this test, although this is supposedly significant, if it's above 0 0.001, we're going to consider this more or less normally distributed. If we look down here at the actual histogram, we can see it does have a bit of a double dip here. And, you know, it's not exactly a normal distribution, but it's normal enough for us to run, for example, a t-test. So, that is our first uh, analysis, um, first way of doing a descriptive statistics. So now we're going to go to our next variable. So let me move this back over here. And the next variable we're going to deal with is the ordinal variable. So let me move this into here. Let me just clean up my results so that you can um, see clearly what I'm doing. Okay. So let me move uh, test score into the variable box and let's see what we want. Well, once again, we want the N and the missing that we always want. We don't want a mean. We do want a median. We don't want a standard deviation. We do want an interquartile range. There's no point in checking normality because we know it's not normally distributed. And when we look at the type of plot that it is good for this particular uh, type of um, data, we want a what's called a box plot, and I'll show you what that is. There is one extra thing that is worthwhile doing. We don't always need it, but I think it's a good thing to do when you have ordinal data. And that's this percentile points, cut points for four equal groups. This will tell us what the 25% mark is, the 50% mark is, and the 75% mark is. And that's a very useful thing to have. So let's go over here to the descriptives. Let's see what we've got. So once again, we've got 20. There's no missing data. The median is 67. So if we think of of test scores in this class, which is what the median, the median score is 67. And the interquartile range is 31.3. The minimum score was 34. The maximum score was 89. That's on that particular scale. And here we have the percentile ranges. 49 was the 25th percentile, 67 was the 50th percentile, that of course is the median, and 75 is the 80, and 80.3 is the 75% percentile. If you want to visually represent this, this is a box plot. This line in the middle is the median. This line, the top end of the box, that's the upper 75% range. This at the bottom is a 25% range. So we go from 25, 50, uh, 25, 75, 50, 25 percent. Okay, that's what we do when we have interval data. Let me clean this up again. Get rid of all the data just so it's easier for you to, to see. And the last variable we're going to deal with is the nominal. So let me go to descriptives. Let me go up here and let me move first language into the variables box. 
Okay, so sample size and missing, that's good. We don't want a mean, that would be meaningless. A median, also meaningless. We do want mode. We do want a frequency table. What a frequency table does is it tells us exactly how each of the levels, uh, the degree to which it's represented in the data set. Um, we don't need a standard deviation. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. We don't need a test of normality because, of course, it's not normally distributed. It is worthwhile keeping the minimum maximum if we have four levels and we would like to see four levels. And the appropriate type of um, presentation for this is a bar plot. So we're going to use a bar plot over here. And now let's look at what our data looks like. So the mode, the most frequent level of language user is two. We'll take a look at what that means exactly in a second. The minimum and maximum is one and four, and indeed we only had four levels. When we look at the cut point, the percentage of total, the so we have five English speakers, that's 25%. We have six Spanish speakers at home, that's 30%. We have five Korean speakers, that's 20%. And we have four Arabic speakers, which is 20%. So this tells us, this frequency table is very useful, but it just tells us how each of these levels, each of these languages in this case, is represented in our sample. And if we look down here at our bar plot, we can see that we have four bars, English, Spanish, Korean, and Arabic. And here we have the frequency count for this bar. So with that, this is a short video on just how to use descriptive statistics in Jamovi. Um, um, and I think, I hope this is helpful for you when you move forward. Um, any study that you do, you always, always want to explore each of your individual variables and the exploration tab on Jamovi is very easy and user friendly. And with that, I'll say goodbye for today and I look forward to seeing you in our next video.